Hey, Antimo, Antonium. <laughs> Hi, Simi. Hi, guys. How's everyone doing? Hey, hey, Summer Perry. Hi, Dev. Hi, Melissa. <sighs> you know, I was just thinking. Hi, Kathy. One of my friends, um is in labor man it's just crazy she's been in labor for a while <laughs> over a day over a day she's been in labor and um man she's holding out that that level of like tenacity she's just she's a warrior queen it's insane it's insane so she's been in labor for over 24 hours at this point. And um, I do believe she's trying her best to still have a vaginal birth. So much courage and so much strength. It's, it's insane, insane the effects that your unborn child can have on you. It's just insane. It's like if you never knew how strong you could be, if you ever questioned anything about yourself, you know, like how much you could tolerate, how much you would endure, just how powerful you are. The amount of power that love could give you Try giving birth. That's freaking... That's like, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So for those of you that don't know, um, I have four. I have four. <laughs> and uh, I gave birth to them naturally. And I remember, like completely unmedicated, I remember... Uh, at, at some point, it, it was like ridiculous amounts of pain. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> it's too much. It hurts. And I remember in those moments, I would tell myself, I would totally tell myself, yes, you can. You can. You can. If anything, show the world through pain how much you love this child. Show this child just how much you would endure. Prove to yourself how much you'd be willing to go through for this child. And that, that thought was always the thought that would get me through another contraction. It's insane, insane, insane. The amount of power that even the unborn can give you simply based on your level of love. I am a beast. <laughs> For my children, I am a beast. But yeah, and, and I remember um, I also needed to be stitched unmedicated because I'm allergic. <laughs> that, <laughs> that didn't go over very well. But I, I remember the level of pain. I, I do. I still remember it. Um, but then if you asked me, like, would, would you do it again? And have an epidural would you do it again and, and like take all the pain meds I don't think so I think I would do it all over again just the way I did the previous times just to prove to myself that I would still go all the way to the ends of creation for this soul it's beautiful it's really, really beautiful what childbirth does. And every time someone that I know gives birth, I remember all of these things over again. 
not to compare with the other mothers because let's face it, not every birth is the same. Sometimes when you give birth, uh, the things that you want, what you planned, doesn't go to plan. You, you make these birth plans and you have all these notions in your head of how it's going to go. Prepare yourself. You get the right team together and you're ready. You're ready. You're going to have that water birth completely natural. There's going to be no screaming. There's just, baby's just going to slide right out. And then the baby being the little sovereign that that child is, it's like, no, I have my own plans. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, people think, um, people think like, you know, that's like the ultimate as a mother, if you can give birth to your children completely unmedicated, that's like the ultimate show. You know, you're like top, top notch. But honestly, you know, not always. I know for me, it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't to show that I can endure more than other women, making me superior in some way. It was more of a fear. Because my very first birth was um, a sunny side up. Baby's head was down, but baby was facing up towards, um, towards the top uh, instead of facing the floor. And so his head didn't fit right in the birth canal. He was wedged for like 27 hours. And I had no idea because it was my first my first labor and delivery, and I had no idea. I had all the symptoms of a sunny side baby, and the staff didn't, they didn't say anything. And it was near the end, after like 27 hours, that they finally convinced me to have an epidural, which didn't work. Um, it didn't work. It was just ridiculous amounts of pain. And uh, eventually, I gave birth. But it was a few days after I got home from delivery, I realized what the epidural did. It damaged my spine. Uh, I herniated my disc, L5-S1. And ever since then, 17 years ago now, 17 years. Ever since then, my back hasn't been the same. And I went without having another child for about six and a half years. I was so traumatized off that birth. I had... <laughs> A fraction of a centimeter away from a fourth degree laceration. <laughs> I was just like in the middle of pushing. The doctor felt it was appropriate to take scissors. My pelvic floor. She cut it with scissors. And immediately I felt tear. Oh, tear. And then... I looked in the mirror because they positioned a mirror so that you could see the baby's head. Luckily, my husband was very quick on his feet and he blocked my view. Because <laughs> I think I would have stopped pushing at that point. I felt that and I tried to look and he blocked my view. And he was just like, you're doing good. You're doing so good. And I was like, I am? He's like, yeah, you're doing so good. And then I gave birth. Baby finally came out. And in the commotion of baby finally coming out, uh, my husband went over to the baby. And then I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, that's not fixable. <laughs> I remember thinking that I saw it. I was like, oh, that's not fixable. Oh my God, that's so not fixable. Uh, it, it was fixable apparently. <laughs> it was fixable. But yeah, uh, it, it destroyed my back. I have degenerated disc disease because of that. And so all my births after that, uh, I opted for no pain meds because I wasn't willing to be injured again. <laughs> not because I'm badass, not because I'm a savage, not because I'm superior to other women, because I felt that was the lesser of two evils. I felt the pain that I would endure for a day, a day's worth of labor, 
would be nothing compared to not being able to walk for weeks at a time because that's that was my reality that I couldn't walk whenever my back would flare up I couldn't walk for like a week or two so <laughs> people have this notion in their head like oh you're so badass I'm like, <laughs> I don't think so I chose the lesser of two evils and I used the love for my unborn child to mentally get me to continue choosing the lesser of two evils, the lesser of two pains. And that's why I always gave birth natural after that. After that, uh, my three after that were just completely natural. And um, I'm looking at my friend's labor. And man, she's getting the staff to sign off on like delaying Pitocin, <laughs> delaying C-section. I'm like, damn, girl. That's some warrior shit. <laughs> Ooh, we, you've been at this over 24 hours and you still like, no, I'm holding in there. I'm holding in there. And then it gets to a point where you're kind of like, mama, that baby's a sovereign. He, he loves you too much. He doesn't want to come out. We're pushing the boundaries of medical safety. And as much as it's going to hurt your heart to not be able to have the birth that you, you envisioned, I know you're going to choose to do whatever is in the best interest of baby. So I'm just like, whoa, you're here. You've been in labor for over 24 hours. Oh my God, you freaking warrior. And she's still like, no, no to the, no to the Pitocin. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hell yeah. And, and you know, when it's your first birth, you're, you're, you know, more likely to, to be like scared. And the, the medical staff is more able to convince you to sign off on things that you wouldn't normally sign off on if you knew better you know what I mean because they got me to sign off on quite a bit of stuff for my first child and <laughs> all the other children I was just like no bitches I'm not signing off on shit no nothing <laughs> don't be poking me with nothing I will raise hell up in this <laughs> for one of my labors uh <laughs> the nurse I was so fucking mad at this woman. I was in active labor. The doctor checked me and she's like, you're at four centimeters. We're admitting you. <laughs> baby is close to zero station. So meaning the baby's head's engaged. Okay. It's right there from the birth canal. It's like resting on the birth canal. <laughs> and the nurse comes in to admit me. And I tell her I have a birth plan. <laughs> And she's like, okay, I need to put an IV. I said, no, you need to read my birth plan. <laughs> she was like, I'll read it after I put your IV. And I said, no, in my birth plan says no IV unless medically necessary. <laughs> and she was like, so what am I supposed to do for you? <laughs> and I said, not, not a damn thing. Not unless me or my child is at risk of dying. Are you to do anything for me? <laughs> So you're to leave me alone because I didn't want to give birth in the hospital. I really didn't. I wanted to give birth at home. I only went to the hospital because my husband was like, please don't. <laughs> please don't traumatize me. <laughs> and so we were in the hospital and this woman pissed me off so bad. And I was just like, you know what? You're off my care team. Get the fuck out my room. Because <laughs> she pissed me off so bad. The doctor comes in a few minutes later, kind of like to smooth my feathers, and she checks me again. Labor has stalled. Baby went all the way back up. Was like at a plus two station. Like, baby was like, hell no. <laughs> I was like, mm hmm. They sent me home, and I didn't give birth for another few days. I was like, I'm so pissed at that woman. <laughs> and so. A few days later, I go back. I'm in labor again. <laughs> and they admit me, right? This time my water broke. 
they admit me and this same fucking nurse walks in. No, bitch, get out. Don't even talk to me. I'm not going back home. Get her out of here. And I'm like yelling. And my husband's like, calm down, calm down. Please get out of the room. I was like, I'm not going back home. The water's already broken. Get her out of the fucking room. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, fuck you. You're not fucking this up for me again. This baby needs to come out. And yeah, it was insane. <laughs> It was insane. I don't know. I was so aggressive with that pregnancy. Oh my gosh. So I pushed so hard that my poor baby came out with such force. <laughs> he had two black eyes. I was like, oh shit. He got fucked up. Oh my God. <laughs> he shot out and gave him two black eyes. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, baby. <laughs> It's because that nurse made me so mad. I needed you to come out <laughs> so I don't get sent back home. So that's what ended up happening. But yeah, no, seriously. You don't know, you don't recognize how powerful you are until you have something you love so much. Something that you love so much to inspire you to rise to the greatness that you are. Sometimes it's children. Sometimes it's your significant other. Sometimes it's you, you know? Sometimes life will challenge you in ways that will cause you to, cause you to feel like, you know what? Fuck this. I've had enough. I'm pushing back. And sometimes that's what you need to do. Sometimes you just need to push back. And you need to do it without any apologies. You need to do it knowing that, you know what? You're showing your inner child some love right now. And if, you, if you're able to love on yourself in that way, the amount of healing that you uh, experience is, is profound. Profound. So... Yeah, I'm so inspired by my friend right now. I'm just like, damn girl, you're such a warrior. I was texting with her family. <laughs> I was like, you realize you are in a family of warrior queens. <laughs> I'm so fucking honored to know you guys. Like, God, you're fucking warriors. It's freaking amazing. So, um... Do you guys want to do some readings? You guys want to do some, maybe some energy work? Oh, hey, hey, this is why I came on live. I'm sorry. Right before I came on live, I started texting with my friends and I totally went off on a tangent about babies. <laughs> why I came on live was actually for free readings, first off. <laughs> And secondly, I wanted to share some amazing, amazing news. I, I hit a milestone for for Instagram. <laughs> I was like, where am I on right now? For Instagram, we hit 10,000 followers. Awesome, awesome. So I figured I would do something to celebrate. If you follow my page and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm going to be going live on Instagram and YouTube randomly throughout the day for the next few days. When I go live, I'm gonna start giving prizes away, including private sessions with me. If you've never been to my website and checked out my private sessions, you need to go check it out so you have an idea of the gravity of what this prize is. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, I know my sessions aren't cheap. So these are major prizes. And I also have products. I'm working with some folks, very, very talented artisans who are creating some Emmy approved items. And so I'm gonna be giving away items. I'm also gonna be giving away private sessions just to celebrate, because I'm all about celebrating. Hi, Stoner Athlete. So, you definitely should follow and subscribe here and on YouTube. YouTube, I'm Emmy Evolving as well. So let's start. Let's start. 
Okay, Antonium. Is that how you say it? Antonium? Is that how it is? All right, what type of what type of question do you have? Or do you just want a regular uh general reading? Antonio. Oh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so do you want a general? Okay. General reading. Let me see what's going on. This is weird. Uh, are you drawn to Peru? Machu Picchu? For some reason, your higher self shows a Peruvian hillside and it looks like um, Machu Picchu and this other oh god what was the name of it Oleotontambo or some shit <laughs> let me tell you I went last year and I didn't I don't I can't speak Spanish until I had to tell that driver you need to take me back there because I want a mother freaking hat with the face of a llama <laughs> me gusto sombrero con cara de llama <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> he's trying to take I, was, I don't want no niche shit I want the other one but yeah it's that place Olio Tom Tom Tombo whatever the hell it's called but those two places, your higher self keeps showing that. Um, I don't know why. And Olio Tom 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 Tambo. <laughs> Let me just fucking look it up. Because this is just making me feel so incompetent. Olio Tom Tambo. Okay, Ollantaytambo, Peru. So yeah, it's in the Sacred Valley. It's usually where they prime people before they send them by train through the Sacred Valley to Machu Picchu. Um, <laughs> he said, Horio Tombo. <laughs> you You'll love it. Yeah, no, maybe you need to go, but that's what I'm being shown. Um, Machu Picchu and Ollantaytambo. Ollantaytambo is whatever the fuck you say. <laughs> Anyways, those are the two places that I see. It, it's ancient though. It looks like those structures are just being completed. And I don't. For some reason, I think this is a galactic life. Because I'm I'm seeing with your eyes, the Peruvian people are not very tall. They're not very tall. They're very compact. And um, you a lanky ass mofo. <laughs> your, your limbs are really long. Very delicate limbs. And your torso is very long. I get the impression that you're very, very tall. And um, the torso is very like slim. And the Peruvian people, their torso tends to be a little bit wider. Their lungs are bigger because of the altitude. I think you're alien, bro. <laughs> I think you were alien in that life. So there you go. <laughs> you need to travel. You need to go back and check it out. I don't know, maybe you left yourself something. Oh, you're 5'11", but you feel bigger than your body. I would say that, I don't know. I, I'm just assuming at this point because I'm only 5'3". I don't know what it's like to be like nearly seven feet tall. I'm assuming it's around seven feet tall because you look very far from the ground. <laughs> when I look down, it's like very far from the ground. Um, there, there are stargates there. There are. There's portals too. Mm -hmm. 
there are. Um, I know at one point, and I don't know if you'll find any literature, any information online about this. This is strictly from my galactic memories. I remember at some point, uh, this was a galactic life of mine. I was instructed to go back to Machu Picchu and shut down the ley line. And everything was clamped down and no energy was allowed to flow there. Um, it, I want to say it was close to the time that the Spaniards were going to arrive. So, yeah, I think you, you flew a lot, Antonio. I definitely think you flew a lot. So let me show you, <clears throat> let me show you a picture. Ollantaytambo is what it's called. Ollantaytambo. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, let me show you if I can find it. That shit. There was not enough coca in that motherfucking place to get me to breathe right. <laughs> and our freaking guide. Excuse me and my non-Peruvian lungs, fucker. <laughs> it was like, you're okay. Just breathe. Another five miles up the fucking hill. You're okay. You won't pass out. Yeah, you ain't got no freaking oxygen. Half a... <laughs> no, he was an amazing guide. Um, here. Uh, I distinctly remember, because we actually did go there. This little area is what I saw. We were walking through the path... Oops. Well, shit. Well, shit. We were walking through the path. Here we go. There is a pathway right over there, and it goes around, round and round. Um, I distinctly remember us walking through that. Not us. You. You were walking through that pathway. Yeah, those steps were huge, right, girl? You remember that? I was like, <laughs> he's like, you have your coca? <laughs> like, fucking, just put it in the vein. <laughs> so apparently they have coca candy. <laughs> There's nothing you snort. I was like, maybe if I snort something, <laughs> this shit will make me breathe because I'm going to die here. I mean, he had no mercy. Like, just because we the same size don't mean our lungs is the same size. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Okay. Um, yeah, you were hella tall. I don't think you built it, though. I don't necessarily feel like you built it. But I do feel like you definitely were there. Um, I definitely feel like you were there. A few other places. But that and Machu Picchu are what comes to mind. Um, and this city... This city is definitely um, one of the cities that you stop at before the train takes you through the Sacred Valley to Machu Picchu. So yeah, um, I, you were an alien traveler. <laughs> so let's see. Is it familiar to you? Look it up. Oh, hi, be more conscious. <laughs> Apparently it wanted me to wave at you. So does anyone else want a reading? Let's see. But that's pretty cool that you got your passport. <clears throat> Pookie Rabbit. Just because I like your name. You can have a reading. What would you like to ask Pookie Rabbit? <laughs> oh my god okay would you like a general reading pookie rabbit whatever <laughs> oh emmy stop it <laughs> so pookie rabbit would you like a general reading all right let's see
So I'm being shown what looks like a uh, very cloudy. Um, it's like very overcast. I can't quite discern if this is like the East Coast or if it's like the UK. I don't know why. I can't discern. But I'm being shown a really overcast sky. I don't understand. Cause it, it, it looks like it might be rather old, but then it doesn't feel old. And then I ask for more details and it almost looks like, like a Druid type of village. So, I mean, this is like old, old. Are you drawn to the Druids? Hi, Kathy. You're not drawn to druids? It looks like druids. And it's just like a lazy village type of imagery. Um, it keeps, hi Brickale, it keeps alternating from like a feeling of a rainy day in a lazy town on the east coast to like this feeling of somewhere in the lower portion of the UK. I, is, is that a different country in the lower portion? Like the really, really southern area. And then it becomes like an ancient looking village. Like very... Um, I don't want to say primitive, but it's like a very basic type of cloth that's used to make clothing, um, natural fi fibers, um, like even the shoes almost look just like, like, like moccasins almost, leather, and you're male in this life. Are you afraid to be, <coughs> excuse me, are you afraid to be mean, Pookie Rabbit? Do you, um, do you have like a really bad temper that you don't show anyone? Like you hide it? I think you might have been really mean in this life and some of it carried over. And it was something in that life that really, like you really regretted some of the behaviors. Um, I don't think you were necessarily a bad person. I think life, the struggles of life, um, made you very bitter and very cold. But it's not that you were evil. Um, and I think in this life, do, do you really, really hide your anything outside of happy and nice and quiet do you hide from other people uh thank you brickell uh and you know this is not an indicator that you know you have some sort of bad karma and that you're going to be punished and that's why life sucks i think it just carried over into this life so that you could experience um the polar opposite because it's like you in this life you go out of your way to be very accommodating very nice um you really hold back the things that you want to say because you don't want to hurt people's feelings that type of feeling that i get from you and it's sometimes when we live lives uh we swing the pendulum very far in the opposite direction excuse me for example um in the life that I had right before this one, 
uh, I lived as a Japanese uh, military personnel. And I know that the Japanese were very brutal in their occupation of the Philippines. And so my following life, uh, I was born Filipino <laughs> because I needed to experience. And what's crazy is that like the first portion of my life, I really disliked Filipinos. I was like, I'm not, don't call me Filipino. And it was weird. It was really, really weird because my family are very proud to be Filipino. And so, uh, yeah, I used to, when, when I was a kid, I used to tell people, no, I'm Japanese. And I couldn't figure out why. I, I thought it was just weird. Apparently, it was <laughs> my last life, I was Japanese. And I used to always tell my parents, like, I, I need to go back home. <laughs> and my mom would be like, you need to be quiet is what you need to do. <laughs> and so I later figured out um, those dreams actually weren't dreams. They were memories of me being in Japan. And um, I needed to experience this life as a Filipino so that I could have a clear idea of the beauty of the people that I didn't allow myself to experience in that previous life. And so now, I mean, I just love Filipinos. I love the fact that I'm Filipino. I'm Panay. Very proud to be Panay. Um, yeah, I think that's what's going on with you, Pookie Rabbit. Definitely. And sometimes people go through these things and they don't understand. And then they start to feel like, oh my God, it's because I'm a bad person. No, you're not a bad person. You're not a bad person. Brickale, you'd love to learn about your past lives. Let's see if I can. And sometimes the higher self doesn't want to share about the past lives. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I, I just, I go by whatever the higher self wants to share. So let's see if your higher self would give us any information. Um... <laughs> do you like bread do you like to bake your higher self is very sweet by the way <laughs> and this is for Bikale You love to eat bread, but not really into baking. That's funny. Um, <laughs> this life that you showed, your higher self showed, you were a baker. You were a man and you would bake all day. All day. You owned a bakery, um, but you wouldn't eat the bread. You're just so sick of bread. <laughs> so there you go. You're not into baking now, but you love to eat bread. Um in this life, uh, it, it's kind of feeling, it's kind of feeling like you were Jewish and that you got um, put into one of the camps. Um, I'm trying to get a name for you. I can't, your higher self, your, your higher self is, is really distraught. Are you okay? Do you feel okay right now? Is your heart starting to pound and hard to breathe? Do you mind if I send you some sedation to calm all of that? Um, 
He's just so distraught. Is it okay if I if I send some assistance? And it's okay if you cry. How do you feel now? <clears throat> Hi, Kathy. I think I'm going to wave at everyone. <laughs> you feel okay now? Like a giant weight was lifted. <clears throat> it was a lot of trauma that you endured in that life, okay? Um, there was a lot of just a need to be acknowledged. That life carried with it a huge need to be acknowledged. And now that you've acknowledged it and I've asked him to just please calm down. The harm is over. You're not going to experience that again. Calm down. And he's finally like, okay. But he was very afraid that it would start another cycle and that you'd be taken in this life as well. And all I kept hearing was like, not again, not again, not again, not again. Like, no worries. No one's going to take you again. No one's going to take you again. You're perfectly okay. Poor Melissa was all yawning. <laughs> we nearly knocked Melissa out. <laughs> But yeah, um, so in that life, you were um, Jewish and you did have a bakery. <clears throat> it was a very difficult thing for you to experience, understandably so. Very, very difficult. And at this point, um, you weren't in Auschwitz. Uh, I don't know what camp this is. <clears throat> I don't remember much about the Holocaust, but um, I keep hearing like it, it was like the single largest roundup and um, execution. Hold on. Okay, um, shit. Do you like French pastries? Is that what you like to eat? Okay, I'm about to cry. <laughs> so I go and Google single largest roundup for Holocaust. And it's the Vel de Heve roundup was a Nazi directed raid and mass arrest of Jews in Paris.
like Salt Lake, Paris. But I've never traveled in Europe, so I was like, I don't know, maybe everything's like Paris. <laughs> maybe everything is like that in Europe. But, yeah. So, you have something to begin looking up. Um, I would definitely start Googling the hell out of that event. Um, from the feeling that I get, you were one of the largest well-known bakeries. You were extremely successful. One of the largest, most well-known bakeries. And you were rounded up in that particular event. So um, do some research on that. Definitely do some research on that. You might you might be guided to your previous name. I think that part of you wants to be rediscovered because that um, the panic that you were starting to feel, um, <clears throat> it was your former life. That former you was very much afraid of being forgotten. Um, and I don't know if they convinced people to like go because they they had promised something along the lines of like um, your family is going to come and pick you up. So you just need to go to this area. But it's definitely a feeling that you you took in what they said, whatever lie they gave. And um, you waited for your family to come and they never came. You didn't realize it was a lie and they never came. And uh, that's just stuck with you. Do you, do you have abandonment? Is, is that something that really you struggle with? Like if you feel like someone's going to leave you? Or someone's going to reject you? I have that fear in this life too, like even when I was younger. It really affected you. It really, really affected you badly. Um, I'm asking your higher self if I have permission to do some energetic work to kind of um, converge this life so that those struggles don't keep bleeding over into this one. Um, you know, it might be best if you consider a private session with me. Um, there's certain details that should be shared privately. Uh, I'm not being given these details right now. But um, in that previous life, you were a very private, private man. And it's creating a lot of anxiety within him to think that others will know these things. Like he's very ashamed, very private and very ashamed that life went the way that it did. Um consider having a private session. You can find that on my website. Um, it's past life retrieval and soul convergence. Um, just go over to meevolving.com, go to services and you'll, you'll see that as an option. But um, you should consider having all of this converged so it doesn't continue to be uh, an issue in this life. It's a very significant bleed over. Very, very significant. Um, Um, in the interim, definitely look up the Vel de Heave Roundup. Just Google search single largest roundup holocaust. That's what I Google searched and that's what came up. It was in a French deportation. 
Like he feels a lot better having been acknowledged. Oh, really? You just started going to therapy to try and work past all this. You didn't even think about your past life. Sometimes I found that uh, it's actually a large portion of our struggles in this life have to do with previous life, especially the life right before this one. Um, yeah, I, I'm finding that more and more with people. So definitely consider it. Um, I, I wouldn't say it will completely um, erase the need for traditional therapy, but um, it can definitely help. It can definitely help because you'll have um, certain details that you can begin researching for yourself and then you know, giving yourself the confirmation that you need so that you can discuss it with your therapist. And of course, there is energetic work that's combined with it for my services. Um, I do go ahead and, and merge those lives back together um, and do the coding corrections on your morphogenetic template that are necessary because sometimes traumas will erect walls. Uh, it will cause you to compartmentalize um, events in previous lives. But it's like having baskets that are woven but aren't watertight and expecting it to hold water. It just starts to seep out. So it still bleeds through, but then because it's in a container, you're like, where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? You, you don't know what's leaking out type of sensation. So I hope that helps, Brickell. I really hope that helps. Hello, Chris, coast to coast. Hello, Snowflake138. I've decided for every live, I'm going to wave at mofos. You join my live, I'll wave at you. <laughs> I'm going to wave at everybody. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lisa. So, yeah, just definitely. Um, can I wave at you too? No, stop. How do I do this? Oh my God. J Rose is asking me to report you or hide the live. There we go. Oh my God. That scared the shit out of me. I was like, no. Hello, Chelsea Angel. Hello, Fegor. Sorry, that was so ugly that I said that. Yes, I was like, there you go. There's a therapist right there. <laughs> Maybe you guys are in the same area. <laughs> and I was like, ding, ding, ding. Thank God I'm saying this doesn't replace traditional therapy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Husband's like, oh, she's going to kill me. <laughs> she's going to be like, Emmy. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes energy work can replace certain things, but, you know, everything has its purpose. <laughs> sometimes things work together. Sometimes things don't. <sighs> Anyone else want a reading? Anyone? Anyone? You know, I remember one time I was so stressed out and I was cracking up and, um, I don't remember if it was a person I was arguing with. <laughs> they got so mad that I was laughing. Like, what the fuck are you laughing at? You, the other option is to kill you. And I really, I don't have bail money. <laughs> Why do you think I'm laughing? Because I fucking killed you in my head. Sorry. Because I was like, why do you think I'm laughing? I killed you in my head like four or five times. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, <laughs> so now my, my husband, when I'm really mad and I'm laughing, he's like, hide all the sharp shit. <laughs> she done killed all of us already. She killed us all. Hide all the sharp shit. <laughs> Duct tape her to the chair. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. To date, I haven't killed anyone in 40 years. 
<laughs> oh god, I better stop before people take me serious. <laughs> Alright, who wants a reading? First person that I see asking for a reading is gonna get a reading. <laughs> Antonio is now scared. Look here, alien. <laughs> Look here, alien. <laughs> All right. Nails by Echo. Let's see. Nail by Echo. <sighs> well, wait, what kind of reading do you want? Is it just a general reading? You just want a general or... <laughs> Apparently, all of our souls tonight have just been spilling tea on previous lives. <laughs> all right, general. Okay. Ooh. Okay, this is going to sound... You're not Asian, are you? You're not Asian right now? This is going to sound so freaking <laughs> racist stereotype. <laughs> okay. I swear it's not because you're, it's not because your handle talks about nails. <laughs> I see you in a Vietnamese countryside, a fisherman. Um, this is a long, long time ago before the French occupation. Um, Did Vietnam have a king and queen? Did they have royalty? <clears throat> um, they still have a king? Ooh. This would be around. Okay. So you were tied to the Vietnamese royalty. What the fuck? Um, hold on. Last Last Vietnam Royal before French. Let me see. Um, okay. <clears throat> This kind of resonates, but not fully. So, oh shit, I only got it. Okay. Um, it says the Ming Empire conquered the Red River Valley for a while before native Vietnamese regained control and the French Empire reduced Vietnam to a French something something. Um, oh my God. Okay, well that, it ties to it. She said, I had card reading by you a while ago. You told me I was from royalty in a past life. It's the Vietnamese royal family. What up, boo? There you go. You were part of the Vietnamese royal family. You guys, I'm going to upload this on my YouTube. So um, if you want to be able to see uh, whatever I read for you, you don't have to worry about being, being deleted here on Insta. I upload all my lives over at YouTube. So subscribe to my YouTube. Join me on YouTube. Emmy Evolving is my channel. And follow my page. I'm going to be coming live here and there. Pretty frequent. To do free stuff. Give away free stuff. But you have to be subscribed. Just saying. Just saying. I got 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, 